So welcome back to part two of the uh, nightlight circuit uh, instruction video. So last video we uh, turned our diagram into a PCB like this and we then started replacing various components and shrinking everything down and hopefully you're at a stage now where you've got something similar to this that still works. Uh, you can check by moving the LDR up and down. All right, so when you got to this stage, there's still unfortunately quite a way to go um, until this is a finished PCB that I'll be happy to let you manufacture. A couple of little things we want to sort out. So um, I'm going to try and talk to you about some of them now. Uh, the first one we're going to do is um, we're going to actually change our LEDs uh, for something that's going to be a little bit easier to solder. Now, you might be sort of thinking, well, hang on, look. Why, why am I doing that? I've already got two pads here for my LEDs um, and they work. Well, when we make your circuit, these LEDs are actually going to be on wires. And so that's a good thing because it means we can actually space the pads a bit further apart. And just trust me on this one, you'll find it easier to solder them uh, in the school workshop if we've got pads that are further apart. So to start us off, go over to your component list and go down to the bottom where you've got red background components and choose five millimeter LEDs and you'll see we get some sort of real pictures of LEDs here um, I don't really care what color you use I'm just going to use three blue ones okay um, I'm just going to rotate them all around you'll see why in a minute and what I'm now going to do is I'm going to delete my LEDs and I'm going to put pads in their place. So you've got a little pad tool up here which is quite useful. So I'm going to put one pad here, pad, pad, and another pad below. Now you might notice they're spaced a little bit further apart than they were before. Um, that's really going to make your life soldering a hell of a lot easier. Okay, um, we now have to connect these as though we would do in the in the real workshop. Uh, in real life. So you're going to take your long leg of your LED, which is called your anode, and connect it to this upper pad, uh, the one that goes to the resistor. If you have a look, it's the anodes that go to the resistors. There we go. So do that for all of them. Drag and drop. And we're going to connect the cathodes, the short legs, to the bottom. And the cathode is like the negative or zero volts, and that goes directly back to the negative of the battery as per here. So we know we've done that correctly. Now in theory, if you press play and drag your LDR, those off-board LEDs should light up. Okay, a um, couple of other things I'd like you to do. So uh, when we build these, we use the correct color wires. Uh, we tend to use red to denote a positive connection and black to denote negative or zero volts. So I want you to select the positive wire, right click on it, go to properties and set it to red. Okay, you can actually hold down shift and select multiple wires at once. And you may remember this from year seven, but we use black for negative. So right click on those properties and go to black. Um, right, the way I like to remember this, it's a bit of a bad analogy, but it works for me. Uh, red is like the color of blood and blood means you're alive generally. And that's quite a positive thing. Uh, and black, black is the color that emos dress in and emos are really depressing and negative, you know. So that's that's how I remember that. Black negative because of emos and red. Not emus, emos. Uh, if you don't know what an emo is, ask someone. Um, and red positive. Good. Anyway, uh, so that works for me. Now, there's going to be another component that's going to be on wires, which is going to be our, um, our LDR. Um, we might do the same with that in a minute. But... Another benefit to having uh, components on pads like this is you can set them further apart and you can actually um, further shrink your circuit board as well. So a bit like we were doing in the last video, make your board even smaller. And what I'm teaching you to do here is make a really pro level circuit board. Uh, not some cobbled together thing, we're gonna do it properly. All right, so as you can see, I can get these a little bit tighter in um, and that's all good. Okay, uh, LDR, yeah, we might as well put that guy on wires as well. So I'm going to delete my LDR and I'm going to go to off board sensors, uh, environmental sensors. There's our LDR. And I'm going to put a pad where they used to be. So there was one here and one there. Um, and we're going to join the LDR up with wires, like so. Okay. 
Now we leave it blue wires for the LDR. We tend to use blue, or at least I do in my class. Blue for me means neutral, as in it doesn't have a polarity, doesn't have positive or negative. Okay, so red for positive, black for negative, blue for one that doesn't matter. Okay, so put your wires on. As always, press play and check it still functions. It does. Um, we're going to do a couple of other bits to improve the quality, stick some labels on it, and then we're done with this. So I would now look at doing the following. Um, our potentiometer, um, this is something specific to my school, but the type we buy actually has bigger legs than the circuit wizard version and what it means is the legs are actually too big to fit in the holes that we drill here. Normally we drill a one millimeter hole for all of these components in the workshop but um, we're going to need to make a one and a half millimeter hole just for this component. So we can change that, double click on it, um, sorry right click on it and go to pads and you're going to set the hole size to, I don't know why mine's in inches, I think I can type 1.5 mm Hopefully that'll do the trick. There we go. That's made the hole bigger, um, but you'll notice the copper material around it has got really small. So I'm going to go and change that as well. Pads, and just make sure you type mm afterwards. It converts it from inches to millimeters. So let's go three millimeters for the width, three millimeters for the height. All right, so that's given us a nice area to solder to and a bigger hole in there for the component so it'll actually fit in place. Um, it's getting a bit close to my transistor here as well now, if I look at it in real world view. All right, these are a bit close and the ones we have actually have a plastic body which will probably touch that transistor so it might be a good idea if yours looked like that to make a little bit more space. Alright, good. Okay, other things we're going to do, just uh, we're going to sort of straighten up some lines. Uh, we're having a look around our circuit to make sure things aren't too close. All right, it's very easy to do things like that this would now be joined to that and that would be bad even if it's sort of there and there is a gap if you zoom out to a hundred percent you'll see they almost appear to be joined and the process we manufacture our circuit boards with that little gap there won't actually get separated in real life and it'll cause you all sorts of problems when you try to get this circuit board working so go round and I want you to check that there is the width of a track you know so this wide space between any connection that shouldn't be touching another okay so there should be at least a tracks width so I'm just gonna go and make a little bit more room now I know this seems counterintuitive because in the last video so I'm just deleting those um, I told you to make everything as small as possible well there's a limit on to how small you want to go um, this is a little bit close for comfort here but I can't really avoid it I'm gonna move that transistor over a little bit to make a bit more room straighten the lines up Okay, it's a little bit close there, but I think we're all right. Okay, so nothing's too close, all good. Um, maybe where I'm soldering my battery, it's a bit close to my variable resistor, so I'm going to bring that down a bit. All right, still doing the same job, it's just less in the way. Okay, let's press play and check everything still works. Good. Right, so we've made that bigger. We've changed these for off-board components. I don't know what's happening with my computer at the moment. It's gone all slow and rubbish. Hold on a second. Um, right, another thing you could do is we're going to change the thickness of these pads. All right, so select your um, transistors. Sorry, I need to press stop. That's my mistake. Select your transistors, right click, pads. And we're going to make these guys thicker as well. So let's try making these um, 0.1 inch, 0.1 inch. Okay, we'll do the same for this one. 0.1, 0.1. Now, some of you won't bother doing that, and you might be all right, but trust me on this one, it'll be easier to solder your pads on your transistors if you thicken them up a bit. Uh, you might want to do the same for your resistors here. So, right click pads and set them to 0.1 of an inch. Obviously, then do a check to see if anything's a bit too close. All right, I think we're just about fine. Okay, uh, that's my circuit board. I've got to put labels on it now and draw a board around it and then we're done. So you might have been looking around going, oh, these are my labels. Uh, they're not. They are labels to help you build it in this view. Um, but if we look in artwork mode, um, this is what you're actually going to get manufactured. 
uh, this is what we send to the uh, etch tank that makes them. So there are no labels appearing here in copper. So there's a special label tool, which is this one up here that says AA. And what you're going to do is basically label all the things I do. So um, I'm going to label the following, plus and minus. Or I'm just going to do plus for now. And I'm going to put a plus next to each of the plus connections for my LEDs. So I remember where my red wire is going to go. Okay, I'm going to uh, I just copied and pasted that by the way. I'm going to do another text on, I'm going to put LEDs and I'm going to drag that in the gap between. Okay, now be careful. Obviously, you want it to look as neat as possible. Um, if I look at artwork now, can you see what it's done? It's added labels in. Ignore the fact that the text is back to front. Um, that's to do with how it's manufactured. It's a process involving shining light through, but I'll show you that later on how that works. But for now, uh, you want your text put in there. Um, one thing to watch out for, this text will also be made out of copper. And therefore, it's possible to actually join, or, I don't know, say like this, if we were to do that. Oh, <laughs> I'm not doing very well here. Um, but hopefully, you can see what I mean. You can actually join two parts of a track together with text. Um, that would cause a problem in real life and in Circuit Wizard. So you need to make sure you avoid that. If you want, you can double click on your text, or sorry, right click on it, go to font, and you can change the font. I wouldn't really recommend it, but you can actually change the size of it and make it smaller. Now the problem is the smaller you make the font, the better it fits, but the less likely it is to come out. Okay, So again, put your, put your labels wherever they're going to help you build it. So in my case, I'm going to do that. All right, uh, a few more labels I want to do. So I'm going to label um, plus and minus for the battery. So I'm going to do plus, a couple of spaces, and a minus. And I'm going to rotate those labels and stick them here. So I know which side of my battery to connect. I'm going to label LDR. And I'm going to turn it sideways and put it between the place where the LDR is soldered. Uh, I'm going to label um, T for tab, not for transistor, because if you have a look here, see this little square cutout? When we get these things in real life, kids always get confused which way to solder them because they've got three legs that all look the same. If you make sure this little tab on the box lines up with a T, we know we're positioning it the right way around. So I'm going to put a T there, I'm going to put a T there. Um, I've got a variable resistor in the gap, so I'm going to do VR. So I know my variable resistor fits across there. And then I've got a 1K resistor here and a 100 resistor there. So I'm going to put 1K in here to remind me that's where the 1K resistor fits. And 100 here, which is my smaller resistor. We, important we get those in the right place. If I put that resistor here, my LEDs would be really dim. Okay, and also my circuit might damage the transistors, so you have to have the right strength in the right place. Uh, other things you might want to do, maybe uh, PWR for power, put that near your plus and minus. And hopefully if you look at it in artwork now, you'll see this is a little bit more helpful. I've got some clue as to what pads do what. Okay, that's my battery, that's my LEDs, there's a transistor, there's a transistor. Um, obviously it's not perfect you're going to need to um, take a copy of this with you to help you and that's why we're putting these uh, screenshots together oh, wherever it's gone okay you might remember these um, so make sure you do that right labels on it uh, final couple of jobs we're going to get go up to here get circuit board and you're going to drag a sort of border around now if you look in real world that will have put a nice green background on it now and if you look in artwork that will have given you a nice border so we know how to cut it out neatly. And the final couple of steps, I'm actually going to make a bit more space here. And I'm going to make what's called strain relief holes. Um, I'm going to get you to get the pad tool, draw a pad, click on it and I want you to set the width and height to 0 0.2 and the hole to 0 0.1 inch. All right, and that'll make you a nice big pad. Um, we're not going to solder to this, but what we are going to do is we're going to drill um, some holes in your circuit board. I'm actually going to put one down here as well. 
and what we'll do is our battery wires which are really delicate we will thread them a bit like sewing with a needle thread them in and out of that hole and then solder them which will make them a lot stronger and less likely to snap off uh, this hole here we might use for a screw so we'll put a screw through that to screw your circuit board down onto your box okay um, that should be it so press play check it all still works as always and now I want you to get your final couple of screenshots um, so I want one in artwork view because that's what it's actually going to look like before we manufacture it so copy that and add that to your um, to your PowerPoint and I'd like you to get one of it in real world view with all the off-board components like so okay and with the LED drag down to prove it illuminates or the LDR drag down all right good so um, oh, you might I don't know if you can uh, you can't take a picture of it with the lights on but anyway you get the idea so select that copy it and stick that in your PowerPoint okay right the remaining task for you and this will be done in lessons if you've worked really quickly and finished all that or it will be done as a homework if you took a bit longer is you're going to um, write up this page okay so all these screenshots try and put them in kind of order um, you know you might have to shrink some of them down a bit I'd like you to try and keep it to one page please maximum here we go and you're just sort of showing your progression uh, and maybe put your your real world circuit big at the bottom um, if you want to get rid of white background in Word or PowerPoint hopefully you know that you can double click and go to corrections or oh, sorry color set transparent color and click on the white and that will make the, the background see-through just make, makes your presentation look a little bit classier so that all the pictures are there right basically I want you with a series of text boxes so putting text on here to explain everything that's on that slide there what you did at each stage why you put the components where you did how you avoided flying wires and long unnecessary tracks I'm just, just sort of spelling out there um, quality control measures so that would be adding labels and the strain relief holes here and how the labels are going to help you so what did you label and why and how do you think that will help you solder it together in the workshop you know getting components in the right place putting them the right way around stick a title on it called PCB development um, okay and put your name on it obviously and that's going to be one of your first major bits of marked work um, to be fair if you need two pages to do it then do but I certainly don't want to see you using more than two pages of A4 alright lots of info make sure you cover all that save it and then your final job is to email me uh, your circuit wizard file okay or save it in an area on the student drive which I will explain to you in person all right thank you